Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, And a very good afternoon We see you again after a few weeks of hiatus And today is seven, uh, 2nd of July 2021 And we are still in MCO situation Okay After round in the morning uh, I decided to uh, share with you about the forest classifications. Uh, I think majority of the surgical houseman they know about the classification. They learn by heart. They remember. So, what actually the importance of forest classifications in bleeding gastric ulcers? But before that, let me tell you, whenever patient come with hematemesis or melina, uh, it means uh, there is something what we call as emergency condition called upper GI bleed. And when, when we have upper GI bleed, usually it is divided into variceal or non-variceal bleedings. So variceal bleeding, I am going to discuss it separately. We are talking about non variceal bleeding. So, usually easy to know patient with variceal bleeding because you need to get a good history. Uh, patient uh, underlying hepatitis C previously, cirrhotic liver, jaundice. Eh? So, you need to get good history uh, to know this patient having variceal bleed. We talk about non variceal bleed. Non variceal bleed is. Uh, one of the commonest cause of upper GI bleed and it's not esophageal varices you know? among all the upper GI bleed esophageal varices may be number 3 like that the most common cause of non varices bleed uh, of upper GI bleed is actually chronic peptic ulcer uh, usually chronic peptic ulcer is uh, usually long standing patient on uh, energetic eh? Steroid, patient on experience. These are the commonest cause of uh, non variceal upper GI bleed. Then followed by patient on experience, eh? patient on experience, and then you have other conditions like uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dealer violations eh, after chronic peptic ulcer, peptic ulcer disease, then you have condition like dealer foy. Name dealer foy is actually after a person who identified this lesion in 1978. And for them, eh, for th this lesion actually is a nodule, eh, nodule containing blood vessels. And this nodule containing blood vessels is just covered by thin layers of mucosa, very difficult to. Uh, very difficult to identify on scope usually situated at the lesser curvature but bleeding from this vessel is usually catastrophic and you can intervene it by endoscopy as well but if bleeding continuously require urgent surgeries and other condition like uh, gastropathy eh? usually patient with renal failure eh? liver failure they can have gastropathy yeah. and another condition ectasia vascular ectasia and then you have tumor you have tumor you have rare condition like ioto gastro fistula and etc yeah. and i said drug induced uh, bleeding steroid also can induce this okay then we do scope uh, for the house officer, these are the importance and then when the term forest classification is usually is endoscopic grading of the risk stratifications of re-bleed. So when we do scope, we classify the bleedings based on forest 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 2C and 3. And why? It is important, okay. You learn by heart for this 1A spurting and eh? like pipe bomber spurting, uh, like that. For this 1B oozing, right? Slow oozing, 
Okay, so you see in the scope, blood continues from the center of the bleeding and eh, oozing. And you have forest to A, no spotting, no bleeding, it's just visible vessel. You can see the ulcer and then you can see visible vessel like that. Then you have to B, you don't see the vessel, you see clot adhere, right? See clot adhere. And then you have forest to C. This is ulcer crater and then covered by black or oh, hematin spot. Uh, usually black hematin spot. And forestry means heal ulcer, clean base ulcer. You can have ulcer with like yellowish uh, base like that. So when you have this thing, you grade it into one, two, three, one, two, three. And then what is important to you? What is it, why it is so important? You know has know the percentage of the ulcer to rebuild. If forest one a means almost ninety percent of the ulcer can rebuild at any time. Uh, range fifty five to eighty, eh? like that sixty to hundred percent, but ninety percent put it like that. One B fifty percent, forty to fifty percent, two A twenty to thirty percent. Okay, then you go to B less than. 20%, 15%, like that. To see less than 10%, and 3 less than 3%. So, doing by that, forest 1A, 1B, and 2A are considered acute upper GI bleed. And the rest are not so acute. So, if patient came back from scope room, eh, uh, usually surgeon, this we will intervene first one you try to inject perilational or intralational or even using clipping all right to stop the bleeding if bleeding successful patient will come back to the ward all right but patient will come back to the ward and then when you see this uh, you must be very careful so if it is going to acute upper GI bleed 1a 1b and 2a we must treat this patient as patient going to OT. OT means operation theater. So this patient should be prepared like they can go to operation theater anytime because they can rebleed by 90%. They can rebleed by 50%. They can rebleed by 20%. 50% means 2 out of 10 people will rebleed. When they bleed, uh, you have to be very careful eh? because we will either risk of patient or fail depends on how the patient presented in the first place how much blood has been transfused how is patient hemodynamically this patient is prepared like patient going to OT we can attempt another endoscopy and but always prepare that this patient is going to OT so you must monitor this patient in the right place if you have uh, patient being placed in the ward patient should be in the acute bed Observation should be hourly. Look at the patient heart rate. Look at the rice tube. Look at the patient melina. So uh, the doctors need to review the patient regularly, closely, right? Uh, look at the heart rate. Look at the rate of breathing. Le look at for the evidence of continuous bleed. So patient will be pale, eh? tachycardic, melina, continuously, non-stop. Eh? So this patient must be ready for surgery. So you must have what do you call that? Group cross match. You must top up the hemoglobin at least 10. So that whenever patient going to OT, patient is ready. You must put the patient at the acute bed so that everybody can see. You must inform the family member what is the next plan if patient repeat. You must closely monitor. This patient usually we have taken uh, maybe biopsy for H. pylori or maybe not if bleeding is torrential so this is how we manage so houseman when we see this you must know and some of the houseman maybe need to be stationed there throughout the night to make sure patient is safe till the next morning so what happened to forest to b to c and 3 these are the patient it's not so acute and sometimes you find this during endoscopic as an patient they can be discharged you check for H. pylori infection, you can treat this patient as an outpatient. Because why? Because the risk of the less than 10%, less than 15%. Alright? They usually will 
responding to H poly right eradication. So that is important for you to be alert when whenever patient come back from the return from the scope room to the ward, look at the endoscopic finding, look at the photo taken, classify it if one A, one B and two A, this is acute. This is how you prepare the patient. Always alert, heart rate, monitor patient closely hourly, get a cross cross match ready. Eh? Get a blood urea, keep the patient in by mouth that night, make sure the IV pento infusion running. Usually this patient is on IV pento infusion, 80 mg stat and 8 mg hourly. So this patient should be on infusion. For us to be to see entry, usually we can give eradication and oral. Alright, and always alert. This patient should be ready to OT. I hope you understand junior MO. I think I hope you understand about the principle of understanding the forest classification for PPR. ulcer. It's meant to prepare us uh, for the safety of the patient, which patient need further attention, close observation, which patient you can observe in the ordinary one. Alright, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Maybe I'm talking, I will talk about very severe bleeding. Thanks. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.